Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in 5 hours, 34 minutes and 8 seconds. Crucible Leak Start. As I said in the previous videos, I'm gonna be starting my Rage Vortex Berserk. And overall, I think it's gonna hopefully go as expected. It's gonna be pretty, pretty good. But today I wanna talk about my early atlas passive tree what are my plans for like making currency and honestly for me leak start is like a i would say like a two-step program more or less right first step is always um or actually it's only one step and this is like conquering the entire atlas okay means i want to go I'm, like i don't really have any super specific plans early on all i want to do is i want to get all the map completions going whatever maps we have i don't know like 120 or something so i want to have all the 120 maps um fully unlocked with like uh, the the bonus uh, objectives and stuff like that and then on the step two basically is trying to get all the favorite map slots and once my atlas is fully done with all the unique maps, with everything, plus all the 12 favorite maps, then I can say leak start is over for me. And then I'm most likely going to go into my first uh, farming strategy. So basically, um, we, if we load up here a uh, max roll, if we go to resources and here on the atlas passive tree, I'm just going to uh, make um, a passive tree uh, overall um, so you guys see what my early plans are and what maybe the next step is. So stage one, we are now basically into um, the leak start. We have done our first maps. We're going to get our first Atlas passive trees. And there is the first thing that I always do is going for all the shaping or at least all the um, map sustained nodes, which is over here, shaping the skies. Um, shaping the mountains as well as here shaping the valleys and shaping the sea so all of these here um, have a percent chance for maps to drop one tier higher and this is essentially important to actually find all the maps that you're going to need um, to progress into the atlas so you're not forced to buy any maps so you're going to over sustain a bunch of maps and here and there you're just going to use an orb of horizon and transform certain uh, maps to the maps that you're actually missing right so if you would go over here uh, first thing i actually think be, instead of like going up and then right i think we're just gonna take here shrine notes because i'm a pretty big fan of in map mechanics that are not really mechanics and don't take up a lot of time so i'm not specializing in any form of like um what do you say leak mechanic um but what i want to have is some just some um, stuff that we can add to the map which doesn't take a long of time which are for example shrines which are strong boxes which are essences right i see the essence thing i click on it i kill the monster and that's pretty much it essences are uh, a pretty good source of income as well as like some extra loot from strong box and shrine as they will not take up uh, a significant uh, amount of time and i can focus on actually mapping and um, doing my atlas right so then we go over here and taking shaping the sky so this would be probably my first take Second, we're probably going to go down here of uh, shaping the mountains. Then we go over here and fill out the Kirak cluster as well as the one additional Kirak mission each day. I think Kirak early on is uh, pretty, pretty good. He most likely going to sell you maps that you don't have. So you don't have to go to PoE Trade and buy certain maps. And then we uh, take over here shaping the valleys and shaping the sea. So this is basically my first 34 atlas points. My tree is going to look like that. We're going to have like some shrine notes here um, with all the four uh, shaping um, nodes active. So we have a very good um, source of sustaining maps as well as a bunch of like here Kirak and scouting reports and nodes. There are actually some more like here Solidarity for example um, or on the other side here Planet Tactician. Um, which are based around this like atlas scouting reports they are also pretty nice because what these um, atlas scout re um, things are doing is based on which one you have it just re-rolls the kirax uh, mission basically and there is always going to be high chances of maps that you haven't completed yet so you're just going to take those from kirak right so you're going to find maps you're going to do kirak to um like buy maps from him uh, the, the ones that he sells right and we're going to do the um what do you say the daily missions of kirak to sustain our maps and do stuff like that what i also like to do is doing side content that means if i get an alba temple i'm gonna run it if i um have my sulfite full i'm gonna go into delve you know and i'm just gonna play the entire package of poe as far as the mapping things go let me actually quickly uh, mute over here before 
Do not disturb, do not disturb. Oh, I got flashbang. So, so this is basically the bare bones more or less. And then we can opt in into more things. And in my opinion, early on, something like essence is pretty good. So we're gonna pick up all the essence nodes over here. Um, here we have additional essences and here is a remnant. So I'm gonna go for the additional essences. Then we can go over here and take here. So we basically have now and on the bottom side here. So now we have basically all of our essence nodes allocated. This will actually most like, I mean, some of these essence monsters could be quite hard, but I think it's still going to be super fine with the build that I'm playing, which is Rage Vortex, which is known for having quite some good single target or basically pretty high damage. So I think like one Rage Vortex should be able to kill essences, hopefully at least. <laughs> Next thing is strong boxes. Strong boxes are also a uh, pretty nice. So we um, we have our strong box node over here. We're gonna get um, the strong box nodes over there, and then we can basically we can take those strong box nodes, but it's not too necessary. But it um, fits in our basically early essence strong box uh, shrine. Uh, building the atlas because next thing if we're going to look at the shrines uh, we're going to have all the shrine nodes over here the ones that we already allocated and done on top of here is also shrine nodes so now we basically um have spent like um quite a portion of our atlas passives for map sustain essences strong box and shrines and this is probably what i'm gonna do early on and by the way all the uh, atlas passive trees that i'm making here are in the description below uh, from the bare bones until uh, this kind of setup and then on the next point we're gonna add i'm pretty sure i'm gonna add um either Edo of worlds or searing exarch as far as i know searing exarch has better notes when it comes to like the um general flat currency that you can get yes you're gonna miss out on a potential divine shrine from uh, the eater of worlds but honestly i i found one in an entire league so i wouldn't really count on like oh i need to farm eater of uh, eater of worlds just for the divine shrine right if it happens super cool if it doesn't happen you know you probably if you run like a thousand maps overall you're probably better off with going uh with the searing exarch we could actually try to uh take one of the new atlas gateways because the stuff that i'm building here is, is pretty straight for up up in the middle with all the nodes over here so i'm not pathing out on the left or right side so these new atlas gateways here are not really too uh interesting for me to start off right later on when we are going into my first farming strategy this is going to look a little bit different because um, usually this is the kind of like stuff that I'm doing and then most of the time I'm actually going down here and block every single um, leak mechanic. The reason why I do that is in my opinion farming leak mechanics without actually specking into them in your atlas passive tree is kind of a waste of time. I mean, obviously, as long as you're playing the game, you're going to make currency. If you open your breaches, if you open your legions, your expedition, whatever you're going to do, even if you haven't specced into it, you're killing stuff, you actually get currency for it, right? But honestly, the way I think, if I'm going to specialize in whatever I feel like, you know, if I say like, hey, I want to farm breach, and I'm going to spec everything into breach, but I'm still going to block out every single other node, and then we can probably go stream of consciousness, for example, to have even more breach, um spawn chance more or less right then i have a fully um spec out breach so i don't care about harvest i don't care about abyss i don't care about anything but breach right so specking into like or blocking all the leak mechanics for me is quite interesting and they usually do this all the time because i feel like i'm wasting my time if i haven't specced the leak mechanic but it pops up in the map legion might not be the worst because it's still profitable it's not the harder thing as long as your build can handle it but if i see something like harvest or so on you know taking like a minute or two minutes in the harvest growth itself i could run an entire map and kill the map boss and have like more map sustain and whatever instead right this is just my point of view but going further, once we have achieved this um, and we probably settled down uh, or finished the Atlas League start, then I actually want to go for invitation farming. This is something I typically don't do, but in the last like two leagues or so, I always ended up doing some Alk and Go strategy. What, this is something I just like to do, right? But what I really enjoy is taking, for, uh, for example, Conquered Conquerors, uh, where you have a chance for map bosses to drop a conqueror map same with the elder guardian or at least guardian and shaper maps as well as here with chances to drop synthesized maps so just with those um three points here every time i kill a map boss there's a very high chance that i'm going to get 
Guardian maps overall, Conqueror maps, or even like something like a Cortex and so on, right? So if I stay with like this kind of plan where I say, hey, I just want to map, I'm going to do my strong boxes, my shrines, my essences, and I get additional Guardian sustains from that kind of thing, um, then I'm super happy to do so. Maybe even Maven Witness, um, but we're going to see about that. I need to check how good my build is in terms of like speed mapping or if I'm just going to go into some form of bossing. And obviously, you always want to try to get one of your um, influences. So either you go with like Maven and you're going to witness, but currency wise, I'd rather just um, go with like Searing Exarch or Eater of Worlds. But I think I don't want to like make my decision. Wait, oh, wait, my. I was like, bro, it's buggy. No, it's not buggy. Um, basically, what I want to show with this video is like this is my early um, strategy that I'm going to do, right? Map sustain, shrine, essence. And strong boxes once my atlas is full once i have my favorite map slots and my leak start is over in that case right then we're gonna reset a bunch of these things and then i'm gonna make an additional video once i've decided on the final um, atlas tree uh, what it's going to be like as i said the plan is to farm invitations to farm bosses because i usually never do that early on uh, but we're gonna see how it goes maybe i'm just like feeling that it's not gonna be worth it or something and i'm gonna go back to a can go mapping strategy that i like to do but hey, that's going to be in like four or five days from now. Uh, so we're going to see on that. But yeah, links are given in the description below. And everybody, I wish you a wonderful start into the Crucible League. The league itself sounds pretty, pretty promising with all the power spikes and additional stuff that we're going to get. I'm really looking forward to get um, some pretty nice trees early on for like uh, power leveling and stuff like that. Or the kind of like end game, you know, league start for me is always like a magical thing. You know, the first two weeks of a league, you know, zero to hero, you have absolutely nothing. How are you going to get your first divine? How's your first six link looking like, you know, like constant progress in your atlas, constant doing everything. And I think this is like a, a very fun thing to do. And I always enjoyed it, no matter if the league is good or not. So um, I'm going to be live probably one hour prior. So probably at like 9 p.m. My time so league start is at 10 for me, um, which kind of sucks in your row, but it is what it is. So one hour earlier, I'm going to go live and uh, we're going to and chill and hang out if you have some questions then ask any other streamer like <laughs> and uh yeah then we're gonna go into the crucible league and uh we're gonna have a blast either way all right guys all the best of luck many many mirror drops because i'm never gonna get one but maybe it's this time uh the league and uh yeah see you later on stream or on my daily update videos that are starting from tomorrow on i guess so today so we can actually uh talk about that one as well from now on, I'm going to do a daily update video about my build progression as well as daily updates uh, like PUB wise, how I made currency, how did I spend the currency, the upgrades to my character, how does it look like, what is the next plans and so on. League start, I'm not the kind of guy that is like starting up the stream and going for like a 30 hour straight. It's just not my uh, kind of take. I usually go until like 3, 4 in the morning, like a couple of hours, you know, go to like Act 6, maybe Blood Aqueduct, depending on how motivated I am. Then I just go to bed and then we can start on uh, like tomorrow, having the entire day um, to go into maps and then start pushing that shit out and just, uh, yeah, trying to have a good time. But I'll keep you guys updated on a daily base. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and see you in the next.